right now. Um, it's tough to be in this room because it echoes and it doesn't make sense for us to build this room out differently than it is. But I promise you, I have this amazing camera system. I've got LED walls that are curved coming behind me. I'm going to do like a before and after of these on demands of the echo. And then this really cool room that I'm just going to surprise you guys with as it gets built out. So Anyway, welcome to On Demand. Thank you for dealing with the echo right now. And I hope that you guys are loving these lives. Are you? Yes or no? But yes or no, let me know. Are you guys liking these lives? I would love to know what do you like best about them? And I'm gonna go into today's topic, but what am I doing right now? I'm surveying you, but I'm surveying your heart, right? What do you like, what do you like about SAD, SOD, so Shanda On Demand? What do you like about it? So life examples, you're on fire, motivating, uh, love the values that you're creating. My gosh, I have spirits in my house, music is popping on my phone, it's never happened before. Really weird, you guys must be pushing some energy. I love the truth, I love the value, no BS. We get to ask questions, only you guys on the On Demand get to ask questions. Uh, the social media group that's watching get to be voyeurs. They get to like watch in, learn some stuff, and then work it out on their own. You guys on getgoodcoaching.com, you guys get me being able to really help you on the On Demand Mastermind and help you really dive in. So that is not available for everybody unless they go to Get Good Coaching, getgoodcoaching.com. Honesty, amazing training, leadership, love, love, the way you know what we're thinking and where and where we stalk and help or where we stop. I thought you were stalk like you're stalking me. The way you stalk and you and you help us through. It's so good. Transparency. Ah, oh, so good. I love it, you guys. It really does help. So one of the things I say often, we're gonna talk about being unstoppable, but one of the pieces I say a lot is a lot of, I, obviously I get asked constantly, Shanda, how do I throw a profitable business? And I'm like, first of all, I'm looking for your strength. Right? I'm looking for your strength. Where are you strong? I don't think you can see this. So where are you strong? Okay, and so this, like for instance, I was coaching a 1% client this morning. I had a call with them. That's my, my group that I work with together, just a little bit, a little bit tighter group. And, and, um, and one of the girls, I've been watching her for a while, and have you guys ever worked with clients or people, or maybe just have people in your life, that you're like, could you please just move on from this conversation. Like, I don't want to talk about why your dating life is not working anymore because I already told you what to do and you won't do it. Or like, you know, why you're still in debt when really there's so much education out there right now, including here on the On Demand on how to get out of debt, right? Like I, I have people that have paid off $100,000, $300,000 in debt. Your debt doesn't scare me. Right, there's a strategy to pay off your debt. It doesn't scare me, right? So when, when we have these people in our life that keep rehearsing the things that are not working and you've already told them what to do, you kind of get a little bit tired of the conversation. Am I right or am I right? Yes? Okay, so, so here's the thing. I have this client who I adore and she is just at this point in her career where when she looks at the people she attracts, so ask yourself, who do you attract into your life? And when she looks at the people she attracts, she's just like, oh my gosh, I have to work so hard to get you to show up for yourself. And, and so like where that's really painful is in sales, right? Like she, so in sales, she's like working so hard to get her audience to believe in themselves and people that she knows without a doubt that she can help, which by the way is all leadership, right? And I said to her, I said, I had, kind of an open heaven moment where I've been looking at her business and looking at her business and looking at her business. And the first thing I'm looking for is I'm looking for your strength, right? I'm looking for your strength. So write this down right now, write down strength and strength is not intuitive because guess what you think your strength is? You probably are avoiding your greatest strength. Okay. So can you guys see that the word strength on there? Is it hard to see? You see it? Okay, I can't tell on my picture. Okay, so strength is the first thing. I cannot unleash and make you like call unleash. I cannot unleash anyone as a mentor, coach, whatever, unless I figure out what your strength is, right? Then once I figure out what your strength is, then I gotta get you 
what is up with all my stuff? It's like all wearing out. I got to get you to own it. And what are you owning? You're owning your calling. Now, this is a really big thing because a lot of times, like my client today, she's been wanting to walk away from owning her calling because it just feels hard. It feels monotonous. It feels like really because she's grinding in sales. How many of you guys are grinding in sales? Put S for sales in the chat. Truly, you're grinding in sales, right? Put an S in the chat. And you know you're grinding in sales. So she's grinding in sales. What's the first thing you want to do when you get tired? Quit. Now, she doesn't have a quit bone in her body, so she doesn't want to quit. But boy, you know, over this like this moment that she's and I promise you when you hear where I go with this, it's going to change your life. It's going to completely change your life because I'm not giving you a motivational speech. Motivation does not work long term because you would still need me to motivate you. Right. And so it's it's up to you to fill your audio books with things that keep your mind right. That's your responsibility. If you are not listening to an audiobook or a podcast on a regular basis and then add my miracle walks in there, you are doing your life a disjustice. Okay, what is in the atmosphere of your house, your mind, your ears? It matters. My, my husband put on the most incredible music this morning. And guess what? You didn't have to tell anybody in the house to be happy. No one. It, it was such a, like, I'm walking around going, my kid, I mean, my kid's happy all the time, but like, he's also very hyper typically. You know what I'm saying? He's like very playful and he likes to come in on the Zooms when he knows he's not allowed to, right? Like he, he's very, very playful and he's going to make probably a great CEO at some point. And the reason why I say that is not because I'm putting something over him, but because he's loud. Right, he's, un he's uninhibited. You, you can, like the kids can literally say something mean to my son and he will literally look at them and say, I just don't accept that, I'm sorry, I know who I am. Like he has this insatiable confidence about him. Right, and I love that. But my husband puts on this music this morning and he's like loving and hugging and like dancing with me in the kitchen. And I'm like, oh my gosh, can I keep this little boy? Can he not become a man? Can I, or maybe he can become a man that still is like that, right? But it matters the atmosphere that you're in. Does that make sense? So my client, I see her strength. Right? And in fact, I see her strength getting stronger. I said to her at the beginning of the year, she recorded something and I watched it and I was like, wow, she's good. I actually even think that I talked about her because I was in such awe with how good she's getting. But yet, like, it's kind of like inching up. It's not growing fast enough. Does that make sense? Her business I'm talking about. And so I can see her strength very clearly, but the problem is owning it. Because when you own something and you build something, it takes work. And a lot of times we say we don't mind the work, but we do. Okay, like if we're just like, let's just have an honesty moment. Okay, I love to work when things are working. <laughs> when things are working, I love to work. Like I'm like, woo, woo, woo. Anybody else like that put me in the chat. Put me in the chat, right? If, actually, I want you to put the word work. Instead of me, put the word work. Like you love to work when things are working out. But when things are tough, what do you want to do? Well, some of you guys want to go to the fridge and eat Oreo cookies if you put them in the fridge. Some of you guys want to drink milk and you're lactose intolerant. No, I'm just kidding. But you like, I want to go just like putter around. When I want to deal with something, I want to, like, I, I feel the heaviness when I wake up. I want to, like, just not be productive. And it's not even that I can't be productive. I just don't want to be. Right? And I, I want to, I don't know if the, I would use the word hide for me, but, I, but it probably is an avoidance. Like, I want to avoid it. Right? Because now what happens is all of my identity stuff comes up. Does that make sense? Anybody relate to that? Put yes if you do, or, or some variation of that. And so on this on-demand virtual mastermind, 
this is not a place that I'm going to white knuckle you to success. To become, un, to become unsuccessful, there's a pattern to it. And to become successful, there's a very clear pattern to it. Okay, becoming successful, you already know. It's kind of the passe stuff like you have to do the things you don't wanna do. And some of you guys are in a moment where it's time to own your calling, like my client, who I said to her today, I don't know if she's listening or not, but I said to her today, I said, she looks at her audience and she's like, I am working so hard to get these people to show up for themselves even after they buy. So not only, and some of you guys are in relationships like this right now, it's like everything is on you. And, and honestly, it, you can complain about it or you can lead it differently, right? But you have to be able to see a new ownership on who you are in the role. Okay, so this ownership is connected to role. You, you're going to need to do some homework, so you should write this down. Okay, what's my role? For the last two years, I hope you appreciate this honesty. For the last two years, I've really been working on my role as a CEO. Right? I'm going to tell you, I don't think you have to be a great CEO to build a business to $3 million. You just have to be good at it. You should write this down. Marketing and sales. That's it. Any industry. Marketing and sales, network marketing, coaching, anything, real estate, anything. You have to be good at marketing, you have to be good at sales, which, which in some cases, depending on your price point, network marketing, you guys have to, uh, which I'm also in that as well, you guys have to build a team, a sales team. If you have a lower price point in the coaching industry or the speaking industry, you still have to build a sales team. It's the same thing. Right, but you have to deliver these leads. And if you, this is the part that people don't get, if you don't focus on lead generation, well, everything else falls apart. Intuitively, from a safety perspective, people wanna dive into the weeds of the product, what's right or wrong with the product, both like ownership companies, network marketing, whatever, people get all caught in the weeds, it's a way to avoid. Because the truth is, is that it really, the most successful businesses are a total effing mess while they're growing. They're, they're a mess. They're an absolute mess, you guys. There's a great book called Blitz Scaling. I think I've said it many times. It's a book that you may not feel qualified to read, but it's written in a way that you will hear it. In other words, it uses very, very big brands which you might be like, I never want to grow something like that. You want to hear the mindset because it unleashes you into your calling. It also unleashes you from what other people say about you. And it also unleashes you from the need for approval because nobody's got your destiny on their heart. And you need to understand that. I don't know why you keep asking other people for permission or to validate your decisions. Like, I don't know why, like it's as if you expect everybody else to have, like see and know your calling. You know who I'm the best coach for? The people who stop asking for permission. And they do their part and they say, Shanda, you're a coach. Here's where I want to go. And here's the problem. How do I get there? But you know what most people do? They come and they say, I want to build business. I want to be successful. I want to make money. And they have no vision of how to actually create that. Are you guys hearing me right now? And what, it's so funny that this content, because even 1% said to me, Talk to me about your freedom funnels. I have, a, I have funnels that create freedom in my life. And why do you do them? And how do you, like, what, what's, what's good and what's not good? I'm like, what's good is me getting what I want. You know what I mean? Like, we have given up the need or we have given up, I don't know, the ownership of the role of our destiny. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah, we, so many of us have given it up. And so we go with this very watered down approach on what success looks like. Like, let me tell you something. You better raise your standards in 2024. You better not be afraid to say what it is that you want. You better be clear on why you want it. I know that's kind of goal planning one-on-one, -on -one, right? Do not 
copy people out there because they're successful, because I'm telling you, you'll be on the wrong road. And if you're on the wrong road, you can spend so many years on the wrong road. Like, don't go write a book unless you're like, okay, my platform needs to write a book. Right? Don't go just learn how to speak when it's like, you're like sitting there going, well, I mean, I don't really see why I want to speak, like, but I guess I should do it. Do you know what I mean? Because that person did it and they made a bunch of money. Like, I'm telling you, you got to grab a hold of it. And so what I'm trying to say is that your calling is not reactional. If you feel like a ping pong ball in business, I'm telling you, it's an indication. You're not grabbing a hold of your vision. And so what's happy is you're looking like you're a shiny object person. You're not a shiny object person. That's not even a real thing. It's not even a real thing. It is a product of being reactional. You have a willingness to go after it, which is beautiful. But the problem is, is that you haven't created a strong enough destination. And so you really don't know why you're building other than something that doesn't have enough power over you yet. Who am I speaking to right now? I feel like I'm speaking to somebody. Who am I speaking to right now? If your vision doesn't have enough power, if your destiny doesn't have enough power over you, you're feeling like you're scattered, you're all over the place, you got too many things to do, that is a big reason why I'm doing today's training. Because if I can get you to own your destiny and nobody can take you off, right? So Melissa, that means that if you say, this is what I want, this is where I wanna go, and I, and I say, pretend it's a membership, like the on-demand mastermind is a membership. I have not been willing to do a membership for I can't even tell you how long. Okay, I require, I'm here 15 days a month, wherever I'm at in the world, right? I'm doing it perfect, imperfect, messy, not messy, whatever, right? Like I'm just doing it, but it requires me to be here. Whether I have, I know this is first world problems, but I have house managers and I have cooks and I've designed it like that. And, and I, like in the last year of being in Puerto Rico, I've been here for a year and a half, but the last year being in Puerto Rico, we only have had a house since November. We lived in Airbnbs and you try and keep a staff when you go back and forth. And I'm accustomed to a staff because I'm telling you, like not, I, I am fully aware there's people that could be judging me right now that's why i'm doing it to say do you have enough courage to share all the different parts of you and not feel like i have to hide who i am today right like i, I used to be a course of miracles girl now i'm a bible girl right like I, like I, I don't i don't know why we feel like we have to hide these parts of ourselves for a need for approval from other people out there does that does that make sense you guys like you have to not give up your destiny because nobody can help you because guess what they never see? Your strength. Because your strength only comes out when it needs to come out. And if your destiny isn't big enough, people can't see enough of you. And so if you still need, so I wanna ask you right now, who in your life currently do you have a need for their approval or validation? Be courageous enough to go put their name in the chat. You probably won't share the live with them because <laughs> they're going to go search the live now and see if their name was in the chat, right? But who in your life currently do you feel like you still ask for permission? You're asking for permission. You're asking them to validate your ideas. You're asking them to give you their endorsement. You're asking for their brains to be over it because you're not certain that you're going in the right direction. Who is it, right? Okay, so... Can you give that up? Like, can you develop courage? Because after we get the role down and owning it, the next piece that you need to have is courage. I'm gonna bring this whole thing together for you. Now, I'm gonna go back to my client so you can see this, okay? So my client, I see her strength. She is essentially very, very tired at dealing with these people that she has to work so hard to first sell them into what they want to buy her product program service. And then when she gets them in there, she has to like turn her life inside out because of how needy they are. Like they're so asking for validation everywhere. They need her handholding everywhere and they don't, they, they don't. 
but they think they do. And so the more she makes herself available to that, the more her culture, which is your life, your business and your life, it has some resemblance to it <laughs> of your heart. And when your heart's got dings in it, guess what happens? Well, the culture of your marriage, the culture of your business, the it's, it, it mirrors it, right? It's wild how it works. Like the only way through is to forgive, clean up, not need validation, become a strong leader. Do you get what I'm saying? Like if my husband ever told me that he, well, actually, this actually happened. My husband wants to do a strategy in his business right now. And I straight out said the strategy is brilliant. And I think it's in the wrong place. And at first, he just kept pushing forward, pushing forward. And then I could see I got some ground with him. He was hearing me, right? And I really don't believe that he should do the thing that he wants to do right now. I think, I think it's a few months out because the strength I see in the team is in a different category. And I think what will happen is they will, they will um, be spread too thin which means it'll slow the growth. Do you see how all that comes? So you guys are like, I'm spread too thin. Okay, so you're confirming that you're growing slow and you're doing nothing about it this week. Well, then it's your, that you, it, it doesn't have to be like that. This is why I say everything is leadership, right? Like you're choosing that. Like, do, you, do you really think it's going to grow faster if you are spread too thin? Are you guys hearing? I feel like you're hearing. So, so that's where I stand on his strategy. And of course, he keeps bringing me back into meetings to talk about his strategy, to build out his strategy, because I know the strategy he wants to build out, right? And I, but I'm like, there's no one to own it in your company. See what I'm saying? Now, my husband's doing this strategy with or without my approval, and he will probably prove me wrong, and he will succeed. Okay, so, and that is what I really hope, and he, it probably will happen that way, because I don't know any of you guys, anybody in a relationship, put an R for relationship in the chat, any of you guys married, dating, whatever, in a relationship right now, if you give enough space and respect to the relationship, you often get proven wrong. <laughs> if, if you actually give a lot, enough space in the relationship, you often get proven wrong. Because if you don't keep suppressing someone, they typically rise up. Why? Because the thing, the X factor that a lot of people don't understand, I don't know if this will show up well enough. The X factor that a lot of people don't get is vision. And when somebody's strong enough to walk past your opinion and you don't keep slamming them, they will typically grab that vision and run with it. Now, if you believe in the vision, you should back it up because that will create speed. But if you really believe that somebody's going to hurt themselves or something's not right, you have to, as a leader, step up and say something. You're not doing anybody any favors because if you can see something, your job is to literally share it. Okay, like you, you, what if, what if I was able to enroll my husband that what he was working on wasn't a good fit? Well, then guess what? His vision would not be strong enough. Does that make sense? Either I'm completely right and that vision needs to go over here. And every time you put a vision over here, it means you're not really that committed to it. Not yet. Doesn't mean you won't pick it back up. It just means the timing is off because you are not like you're not on it does that make sense like you don't own it and so it's actually a great when people say never share your stuff with other people i agree with that if you're not strong enough to run your vision but a great like gut check is to be able to share what it is that you want to do and see if people a understand it and B, back it or challenge it. Do you know what a good COO does in a, good, in a company? They back the CEO, but they challenge what could go wrong. 
And when they challenge what can go wrong, they have those very, very hard conversations. And either the CEO overrides it or runs or says, you're right. I didn't think through that. I need to go back to the drawing board on my vision and strengthen it. But they don't let it go. If they let it go to a better time another time, they're not that committed to it. You guys, I ask you right now, what in your life did you say that you were going to have in 2024? What was the vision you said you were going to have? What's the result that you said that you're going to have? We're currently on February 19th. To me, it feels like we're almost halfway through the year. I know we're not, but that's how it feels to me. I feel this incredible sense of urgency. I feel this incredible sense of not wanting to repeat last year. Like I always like to beat my next year. I, I have this incredible sense of like really getting that, that it really is time for hardcore myself to explode, right? And, and I show this with you because I know that some people, I mean, we're an eight figure company, right? And, but I don't even feel like we're near where we could be. I don't think we're near the amount of people that we can help on this planet at all, like at all. And as I progress in age, like when I have a day that, that my energy is not kicking, that wakes me up like that wakes me up where i'm like oh my gosh even more important for me to be dialing in my nutrition like my nutrition used to be for aesthetics now my nutrition is like i want to keep my energy up and i really walk around like that okay like i really walk around like that but if i don't feel like being shanda anymore I get even more rigorous on blood work, whatever, because I have a vision. And I gotta make sure that I am responsible for that vision, you have a vision. And if you keep allowing month after month to go by and you pacify the hurt, you pacify the lack of results, you're, you're, you're okay with that, you keep the same strategies going in all the different areas of your life, I'm telling you, it's not because you don't know how to solve it. It really comes down to the fact that you are accepting this in your life. Are you hearing me right now? Who needs to make a change like now, like this week? It's currently Monday. February 19th when we're actually streaming live and people will watch the recordings later, right? And so ask yourself, rate yourself right now. Between a one and a 10, and don't be the person that watches this and doesn't engage in the chat. That's freaking weak. That's just weak. You know what I mean? Like you might as well not show up because you're, you're, you're passive in your life. And, and somebody needs to say it. You know, that passive stuff's not working for the people who love you. It's not working for your, your, your loneliness, your happiness. Definitely not working for business. Okay, like I don't want to work with or around a passive business owner or CEO. No way. You know, so between 1 and 10, 10 meaning that you're hitting it. By the way, 10, you can be at a 10 and you don't have your goals yet, but you know you're going to hit it. Right? Or there's 9, 8, 7, 5 is like... You're 50 50 like there's some things that have happened and you and you need to get back on the game right one two three four you you get the point it's like you know what i have not prioritized this right where are where are your 2024 goals sitting right now a lot of fives and sixes and sevens and fives and seven i love the honesty you know what? i love the honesty because we can do something with this you know what I mean? This tells me how to coach you here. This tells me how to help you. You know what I mean? If you're sitting there going, I'm a 10, when meanwhile, like you get off the live, you're like, that was a vanity 10, a vanity metric, right? It's like two, five, two, three, so good. I have a lot of compassion and respect for that, right? And so, because it takes a lot of courage to be able to state that. So now you guys go through the chats. And look, I'm going to give you a chance to be seen and be seen from a really great place. Where do you need the most help? Go in the chat. Where do you need the most help? Brittany says vision, marketing. Something's holding you back. That's leadership. I gave you guys an offer all, all last week. Join HCLnow.com. 
right? You guys have an accountability, marketing, income, delegation. Delegation is control. Okay, so that's that's control. Vision marketing, struggling with closing, that's leadership too, by the way. You know, when you become a good salesperson, you become a great leader. It's not about getting a sale, it's actually about where you're leading someone. I think the whole, there's probably two months I talked about that on this on demand last year, because that's a big one. Where are you taking people to? What top of what mountain are you taking people to? Is it urgent enough in their life, right? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. You can create cash. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the on demand and shut off the streaming in a second, okay? And we're gonna talk about creating cash, okay? And I'm gonna I'm gonna go after your leadership pieces that are stopping you from creating cash, okay? And we're gonna do that. When I look at procrastination, implementation, delegation, delegation is a control issue. Right, you will not delegate properly if you literally have a control issue. If you have busy energy, you have an intimacy issue. I don't know what to tell you, but there's no book that's gonna solve that. There, there's just not. And if you look at the therapy curve, the therapy curve, I'm not saying therapy doesn't work or counseling doesn't work, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it does have a downward curve and it takes a very, very long time. Okay, so when you're battling with things like procrastination, perfectionism, um, time management, courage, vision, all of that's leadership. And so we, we are shutting down the leadership training, okay? And so I wanna share, share something with you guys really quickly. You guys who've, who's done leadership? I'm just curious, who's done leadership? Melissa, can I pop you up here for a second? Melissa, roll as, Ross, I can't. Yes, hi. Hi, really quickly, when you did leadership, what were you struggling with? I, I had a lot of struggles. I, um, I was struggling with my business and that's kind of what I went in with the idea of, okay, I know that I have a lot of things that are holding me back. My, self, my belief in myself was probably the strongest one. Yeah. And um, I knew that there were some things emotionally that I needed to work through. And I had already done some Tony Robbins things but I wasn't, I, I just wasn't breaking through. And wow. when I heard you talk about it, when we were in Tampa, I was like, that's it right there. That's somebody came to me and they were like, no, if you just want to get over your shit and yeah. just, you know, be done with that part, you really got to do leadership. And that that's when I knew. So good. Did it work for you? A hundred percent, but not until the last minute. <laughs> So, so you guys, so it, it, it works all the way through, but it's like you've got vision because people need to know what their strengths are and know where to go. Then you have breakthrough, which is exactly that. Yeah. It's four days. You guys, when she's speaking, I want you to, I want you to do your work. Right, whether you do a leadership training, you do someone out, some, someone's out there, ours, or you're gonna go at it alone, you wanna listen to these stories from a place of breaking up your story, right? You have to break up your story. Do you know how much Sarah Blakely from Spank's story has changed my life? I mean, literally every time I was like, I'm stuck. I said this to our, our, our clients today, I said, do you know that I don't get stuck? I'm being really honest with you. I've not been stuck for so long. I actually don't remember what it feels like to be stuck. Wow. I've gone through good times, bad times, but I am not stuck. It's not even in my ecosystem of my awareness. I had uh, bulging discs in my back, right? MRI, everything. They're like, you're going to need back surgery. I'm like, my vision, which is three days, by the way. I was like, my vision. This is what I mean. Nobody can take you off when you're clear. Right? And I was like, my vision is not, it's the opposite of getting back surgery. The opposite. Because I'd seen enough people who had gotten it that, that they had to go back and get something else. Yeah. Or a second back surgery. I'm not saying that's for everyone. I'm sure there's people who've gotten back surgery that they were great after that. But I had some people in my life, even my stepmother, that I was like, 
it's never looked good after back surgery. And so I was clear that I was not gonna have back surgery, but my vision was to find a doctor. Now start listening to how I do this. Okay, because success leaves clues. My vision was there's gotta be a doctor out there. That was my mantra. There's gotta be a doctor out there that knows how to fix me. Without back surgery, there's gotta be. Like, it's impossible to me to think. And the doctors, the MRIs, uh, Mark Victor Hansen, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, he gave me two really, two or three really good doctors. And they all said the same thing. You history, girl. You got to go in for back surgery. Like there's nothing. We can do all these alternative things, but like truthfully, you're in trouble. And so I, I was at 90 degree angle. I couldn't hold my son when he was born. I'd drop him. It was bad. I, I remember getting out of bed, my legs collapsed, and I looked up at, I can see it in my eye right now, my mind's eye. I look up at Ash on the bed, and I started to cry. I mean, great leaders have horrible moments, but they don't stop. And I looked at Ash, and I go, what type of life am I going to have? I was like, what type of life am I going to have? I can't cycle. We were doing triathlons at that time. I was like, I can't cycle. I can't run. They're telling me I'm not going to be able to swim ever again like what type of quality of life am i going to have and i was just pity party crying my tail off right i was so it was tough it was a tough moment and then i just got up and i was like i know there's a doctor i know there's a doctor my friend joe polish sent me a book called the great pain deception i did not spend time reading that book i went to the author and said what amount of money do i have to pay you because i need help and so, see, that's the place I'm trying to get all entrepreneurs to. But I can't get you there with a video script for a viral video. I can't get you there with a business plan because you are still going to drive that plan. And that's why joinhclnow.com is critically important. So you did vision, you did breakthrough, and then you did practice. What she said, for her, her big breakthrough came on the third level. That was like my husband, actually. He had breakthroughs here. But this is where it came together for him because you got 90 days where you got to go put it into action, right? So you went and put it into action and what happened for you? So um, as I was putting it into action, I, I was battling with myself a lot, but I knew that every time there was a battle, it was something that I had to break through, which was amazing afterward. And uh, once I did go through that and I was pretty close not to graduating, I that's when I had to kick it into gear and say, no, I'm graduating. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I did, I had to somehow, some way. And that was my real breakthrough was figuring that out because then it, it made me realize I can do hard things. That's and right. Not as bad as I think it is always in my brain. And I'm actually stronger than I think I am. And so, like you said, like, I don't feel stuck anymore. I just know the, I like, I have the tools to get me through. Let me give you some coaching right now. So in practice, I don't let people graduate and be on my statistic as a, as a success. If you finish the program, you have to hit the goal that you said you were going to hit. Yeah. Right. So I put myself on the line as much as I put like an attendee, a student through the, uh, on the line. Right. And so in this moment, she's saying, I almost didn't graduate. So I'm going to tell you something, Melissa. I want you to go back through your business strategy. And between now, it's February 19th right now and the end of the month. I want you to ask yourself, what goal did you set for this month? And then that accountability piece between now and the end of the year, what you're showing yourself is how much more you could actually accomplish, right? So you need to put something really big at the end of the month that really has you be in an incomplete if you don't do it. So it could be something like, um, so it could be financial, you guys, people hate this because it's so uncomfortable. It's not odd for me to tell a client that I that for whatever reason, they're not popping through something, I'll say to them, okay, I'm gonna put you on a stretch. And if you don't create X result, you don't enroll 20 people, you don't um, whatever, like go on 16 dates in the next two weeks, like it's impossible stuff. You guys get what I'm saying? Like, do you think freedom comes from working hard? Absolutely not. No. It's from really knowing that that impossible stuff is so much more probable than you think. And then what happens is when you get in the, get in used to stretching like that on a regular basis, it's not exhausting, y'all. What's exhausting is your emotions. Your emotions are exhausting. The crew I hang out with, they, they stretch like this all the time. 
And what that does is it gives you a vision that is like, I'm gonna help a million people in the next three years. Or I'm gonna, it, 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 like where you're standing, that might seem impossible, but it's only because who you hang out with. And you hang out with people that lead the same way you do. Do you guys get that? Like you hang out with people who lead like you. If you criticize them, honestly, you could just go write a character profile and write yours and you've got a lot of the same characteristics. Okay, you're, you're mad at somebody else not being urgent enough. Just look at where you hide and avoid, right? Like it just, it might be packaged different, but it's the same. And so the reason why you get upset about it is because it is the way you operate. And so when you hang out with people who are leading at a high scale, they're doing impossible things. But what's amazing about that is you start doing impossible things. And I don't mean even just yourself. In, in HCL, we help you be able to get competent enough that you can hit any goal or aspiration you want. But then what's next is you need to get into an atmosphere, a community of people, because now you can play ball. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, now you can play ball. Do you guys get that? Like you need to be, you don't need a certain amount of money to play ball. You need to be a certain type of person and you need to be hanging out with them and doing what my friend Jesse says is making a seat for yourself at the table. And that's a new stretch. So I'm going to tell you, Melissa, before the end of today, I want you to identify at least one to three groups that you can get uncomfortable and go to those meetings, associations, dinner parties, whatever. Like I want you to go to a nonprofit that costs like 500 bucks or something for dinner. Like I want you to go do something that like takes you to a totally different group of people. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Like, like you want to go to a totally different group of people. And the reason why is they're not going to think like that. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like I live in a community that everybody had to be unique to come here because they had to leave a lot to come here. Does that make sense? Now a lot of people are like, I don't want to sacrifice. You guys, whether it's heaven or hell, God and Satan both ask you to sacrifice. They both do. Yes. No matter which way you cut it, there is a sacrifice. And so you either sacrifice for good and you create something absolutely over the top or you sacrifice every ounce of your life to live in what looks like comfort, but it is pure hell. And I just share that with you because it's not worth living there. And you have full authority to not live there. So the second thing I want you to do is I want you to put an accountability factor where I want you to identify what it is that you need in your life or your business right now. Okay, so this works for love. This works for business, right? Do you want to get in front of an audience of 5,000 people and get up on a stage? Then you get clear about that vision and you start speaking it every single day. I want to speak for 5,000 people on the stage and that's what I'm doing. And then you literally, you literally, what are you going to inspire them for or help them with? Or what are you going to do? And I want you to start owning that calling. And then when you go to this nonprofit or wherever you go, like, I want you to find something you have to, I want you to pay for something into a room. Okay. Like I, because if you pay for a certain plate, like $200, $300, $500, the average person isn't going there. Do you get what I'm saying? Because they don't, they, they want, uh, the average person wants to get. They will help everybody in their life, but they want to get. If I'm going to pay $200 for dinner, I want to get some. Right? And I'm telling you, you're going to sit next to people and you're going to talk with people. You better not like turtle and go hide in the corner. And I want you to literally make a seat for yourself at the table because you are a leader. And people are not going to ask you how much money you make. They're never going to ask you that. Successful people don't ask that. You know who asks that? Poor people. Successful people do not ask that. Poor people need to qualify all the time. Rich people don't qualify. You know why they don't qualify? They don't need to. If this doesn't work out, they'll do whatever it takes to fix it. Because they will lead. It's exactly what happened to you in practice. They will shore up. They're, they're not, they're, they're not, 
they're not going to get stuck. They know they're not going to get stuck. I met a guy here that literally introduced me to a guy that actually lived in this house, rented this house before we bought it. He now just bought like a ridiculous home in another part of the community. But he stayed here and rented this one first. I met a guy that knew him and introduced us at one point. And he got into business with him. He goes, it was the worst business they ever did. He goes, it just bombed. I mean, this guy just bought like a seven or eight million dollar home. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, why? Because the bomb is not going to take him out. The bomb is not going to make him broke. And if it did make him broke, he will get right back up. Because the speed in which freedom happens has everything to do with how you lead. So I'm going to encourage you. I would like you to, do you know my Instagram? Yes. Okay, I'm going to encourage you. And by the way, there's somebody hacking my Instagram. It's not me. It looks like me. And they're, they're moving people to Telegram and selling them stuff. It's not me. Okay. So go find me on Instagram. I got 109 followers there. And I want you by the end of today, and do not fail you or me. By the end of today, I want you to send me a message and tell me what you found and what you committed to. Okay? Got it. You've done leadership. Now go get into the right communities. Okay? And just keep being, she knows what this means, but keep being your characteristic contract. Okay? Thank you. So, you're muted. Amanda, you're muted. Can you hear me? That's so weird. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so I'm going to end the live for the for the main room or the main social media platforms. I'm going to go to the on demand group. So, guys, not that, but so today, what I want you to really realize is that you need to identify what your strengths are and where where is it that you want to go. So, I really want to grow the on demand mastermind. I think it's some of the best coaching I've ever done in this group. It's very interactive. It's amazing that in this period of time, we're able to develop such a close relationship in here. Am I right or am I right, you guys? Does, it, does this feel personable to you? You guys on Zoom, I mean, right? We do some really great work. And there's, I mean, last week we saw miracles happening, right? We saw literally miracles happening in people's lives, financial miracles happening. In order for cash to flow, you have to know where you're going. What do you need it for? Okay, and so today was a little bit more of, I would say, leadership talking to really say that I cannot give you a plan if you're not going to execute on it. And if you've not executed on a lot of a lot of plans or you've not really hit the goals that you want or you've settled for, well, I showed up better than I ever have. Right. If, if that's kind of your story that I'm telling you that you're you're paying a lot for this. So let me share it like this. If you. If you do this math in your head, first of all, if you want to go to leadership, go to joinhclnow.com. Join hclnow.com. It's totally on sale, and I want to share something with you. It's three parts, but I will tell you, you will be unleashed and unlocked. If you trust me and you watch my lives, and you think at any point in time I did not build my ability to market, lead, sell, help, capacity, like my bandwidth, I'm telling you, my life would not be here. But when I did leadership, I did over $100 million in sales in 15 months. Okay, I've worked in the nightclub industry, didn't know what I was doing, the real estate industry, the coaching industry, and I've coached thousands and thousands of people, over a thousand people new every single month. Okay, like I'm talking over a thousand people every single week that come into my ecosystem and I coach them and I train them and some ascend up to be great leaders and others just watch. Right? And they somehow think that your problems are unsolvable. I'm telling you, your problems are solvable. If you go to joinhclnow.com, you will put yourself in a position without a doubt that you will have a much more safe and dynamic and powerful year. I absolutely promise you that without a doubt, without a doubt. I've seen the numbers of what people create in here, both business-wise, relationship-wise, confidence-wise, and it's over the top. 
I got it on sale right now, like 46%, like, and it's not even Black Friday on sale. If you know that you have a habit, and this is not a habit training, it's a leadership training, but if you have a habit, it means you have a pattern. And if you have a pattern of not finishing what you start or not hitting the result, you cannot afford to not go to joinhcnow.com. Now, if you are married or in a relationship, with this training, we are gonna gift you a training tomorrow with my coach around marriage and partnership. And we're gonna gift it. So if you go to joinhcnow.com, you will get that. Guess what? If you are married and in a partnership, and it's not working at a 10 out of 10 or at least a nine out of 10. It's costing you money. I'm gonna end on this. Pretend I had, I'll put all of this leadership into marketing now. Pretend I had, I need my calculator. Pretend I had 12, uh, let me get, pretend I had 100. Okay, pretend I had 100 leads, right? And a good close ratio is 20%. So write that down, 20%, okay? So I have 100 leads and my close ratio is 20%. Pretend I had a $5,000 offer, okay, got it? So 20% is 20, obviously. 20 sales, clients, product, whatever. At $5,000, So that's a that's funny. That's a hundred thousand dollars in in revenue. You guys follow me? Put yes if you are. If you're following me. So if I generate a hundred leads, which if you don't have an email list or a text message list, honestly, if you don't have a ten thousand person at least text message and email list, you are you are running a massive risk. In fact. If you go to joinhclnow.com, I'll gift you my, my leads course, which I actually am training this week. I'll show you how to build an email list this week of hot buyers. Who needs that? Every single person who does not have this. Okay, so I will throw this in to everybody who actually have, everybody who grabbed leadership last week and, and today, because I got to shut down this offer today. Okay, so this offer is going away today. You know you need leadership, don't second guess it. Run to this link, joinhclnow.com. I'll give you the marriage training tomorrow, but I will also train you this week, so you don't have to wait any longer, how to actually build a text and email list that are buyers, okay, like hot leads, okay? Say I had 100 leads, which you'll have more like 1,000 or 2,000, or if you fail, you'll have 500, okay? Like, you're gonna have 100 leads. I mean, you should more than have 100 leads. But if I, if I generate 100 leads and 20% of that is 20 people and I sell a $5,000 product, then the truth is, is that, do you think I could talk to 20 people in a month? Let me ask you, do you think I could talk to 20 people a month? Yes, of course I can. Which means I have the capacity to make $100,000 a month. Some of you guys are so freaking broke and you just still won't go to joinhclnow.com. Do you know what I mean? It's like, are you kidding me? Like, look at what you're giving up. I'm not kidding you. Change the numbers. But this is where people go sideways. If I can't sell and I generate 100 leads and I only close, let's say 10%, that's 10 people. Some of you guys would be happy with that because your standards are so low. Truthfully, your standards are so low. I got 5,000 times 10, that's 50,000 or 100,000. The cost of me not going to leadership is 50 grand here. Did you, did you follow that? If I generate 100 leads, I just gave you my list building program. I'm going to train it on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. I'll show you how to do that. Now, I'll show you how to generate thousands of people that are interested in what you do. Thousands. Who would want that? Put me if you want thousands of people. Uh, what if you just want 500? I'll show you how to do that. Okay, but if you generate 100, which I could, you will do. I mean, it, there's no way you're not going to do that. You're going to do that. And you have a close ratio of 20%. You sell a product for $5,000. You will make $100,000. I don't care if you do that in 30 days or 60 days. It should not take you more than 60 days. 
which means I can't make an income promise, but I just showed you how to make $50,000 a month or $100,000 a month on a $5,000 offer. Change the numbers if you want to do 3,000 or 2,000, you get it, right? It's a lot of money. But yet they don't teach this in school because the teachers don't get paid this. And so they don't, they're not even, they don't even have heaven authority to teach it because they've never done it. Okay, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients who have done these type of things. Hundreds, right? Hundreds, they're probably on this live right now. If you have generated over $20,000 working with me, put 20 in the chat. If you've generated over $20,000 working with me, put 20, 20 in the chat. Just go put 20 in the chat. Look at the chat, right? There's, there's gotta be more people in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's, I saw Esteban. 20,000 people on my way, I love that, Julie. Eight, nine, right? So do you see what I'm saying? Like. 10, 11, if you generate $20,000, even if you're on social media, you guys, you've generated $20,000 working with me, put 20 in the chat, right? And so this is the cost that people are paying by not doing it. So you got 20% is 100,000. Whether that takes you 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to do, you could do the math, right? If I have a 10% close ratio, that means that I only close, I only make 50,000. The cost of not being able to just lead is $50,000. How many of you guys want to keep leaving money on the table? You want to leave money on the table. How many of you guys want to keep leaving money on the table? Hopefully you put not me because you've got to stop it. And it's not that this is hard to do. It's that people are hard to lead because you have trauma, history. People have told you can't do it. And truthfully, you have, I tried that before and it didn't work, right? 99% of my clients in joinhconow.com have gotten the results. I can't give you any better of a statistic. I cannot, I mean, I wish I could get 100%. I haven't been able to get that yet, but 99% have actually hit the goals that they want. I will show you how to generate not just 100. I will show you how to generate 1,000. I will show you how to generate 4,000. I will show you how to generate 5,000. I will show you how to build a list of 10,000 people because when you learn how to lead, you want to have an audience. And I don't mean a social media audience watching you. I mean, you want to have an audience that you can control. I'm going to Italy this year. And I may spend two weeks or two months in Italy. And I can generate an audience wherever I go. I can send a message out saying I'm coming to Italy and I could fill probably a few pretty good rooms of people that I could help while I was in Italy and I could make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars along the way. It's not about the money, you guys. The money makes you somebody different. It's an amplifier. It makes you more of who you are. And I'm telling you, life without money, it sucks. Life with money, it's a lot more fun. And I recommend you come over to the place of peace where you can help people, you can, you can be responsible around money. And the truth is, is biblically, you're supposed to have it. The Bible speaks about money over 4,000 times. And if you don't have it, something's off. I wanna show you how to close that gap. And what I've identified online is that over 14 years, I can get people to a certain amount of income without leadership, I can't take them higher, right? I can't take them higher. Without leadership, I can't take them higher because the amount of work it takes to be able to help somebody believe in themselves is work that no human has the capacity to do. You have, it's an inward job in leadership to unleash yourself to be able to do that. If you will give yourself literally four months, which means that you are checked out for the whole year, meaning that you're putting a security blanket on your business, on your life, you'll give me four months, I will show you how to absolutely crush it this year. How you can get out of your own way. You don't have to worry about anybody else pulling the purse strings in your life. I will also show you this week, starting on Wednesday, this Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll show you how to build a list. I'm literally doing a three-day workshop. I'll show you how to do it. You can be my guest in that workshop. Who's happy with that? Put me in the chat if you're happy with that. So if you want to take this offer, I'm taking this offer down today. Join hclnow.com. You know if you need it, but what I wouldn't do is hesitate on this. I'm not selling you. I'm literally giving you a bridge to the destiny and the future that you want. Go to joinhclnow.com. And this is a wrap online. I'll see you tomorrow. 
you guys on the on-demand Zoom 